Well, we're out at sea again and we're under sail, glad to say. And um, we've got a situation where we've got a sort of wind against tide. I'm tidying up the boat. I mean, say, look at this place, it's looking beautiful. Uh, because um, we're finally um, able to go out, all the jobs are done. Okay, fair enough, there's no wind worth a damn, but you can do what you can do. in the lock and uh, we're very close to um, low water slack in this case uh, because we thought we would do our compass deviation just to see um, where our compass uh, that we look at every day uh, deviates from um, the magnetic so uh, that's what we're doing today right and um we're just going to take readings every 35 or 40 degrees, or every 30 or 45 uh, degrees. Well, in the um, book, we've actually got it as every 10 degrees. But you'd be, you'd it's be going here to be... for a, you'd be here for a week. We've got the time, Beverly. Stop being. Um... I know, but I'd like to sail. I know we'd like to sail, so we're just going to do a few uh, deviations just to see where we are, and um, and the it's 7.2 on the wind, Bev, so it'll be difficult to sail on that for us. Pessimist. <laughs> the cooker's not really at some sort of peculiar angle. The boat is. So uh, we're having a cup of tea because, uh, whoa. <laughs> Hiya, Skipper. Oh, it's so nice, Beverly. Should I have the land horizontal or should I have you horizontal? <laughs> have the land horizontal. No, it's just so nice just to get out again. Just toodling around for the moment. There's going to be some bad weather at the weekend, so we've decided that we'll just do some toodles and then um, we'll go out after the bad weather. That's the plan. Uh -huh. So what else have we done? We've done our compass deviation. Done our compass deviation. Um, we checked the depth as much as we could. Um, but that looks to be fine, so there's no point in calibrating that. Um, Annie's on the blink again, but... Oh no! I mean, so the speed over ground, of course over ground is 170 and she's reading 140. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> We've got the seals set the way we like them. They're uh, drawing nicely on a uh, close hull. Skipper Gaynor is enjoying her cup of tea. Absolutely. Oh yeah. We'll be asking you to do a tack in a minute, Beth. but we're still seven meters of depth, so we're still fine on depth. And that's seven under our keel. Yes, of course it is. So we're actually about nine or ten here. Yeah, but um, the way uh, Belfast Lock is, it shelves uh, the way we're going, whereas the other side of the lock, it's quite deep, quite mm. close. We, we um, are just uh, moving slip. Um, because the slip's a bit difficult for us to get in and out of um, so we're moving out uh, closer to the entrance it does mean it's a bit more bouncy for storms but it does mean our boat fits but it does mean our boat fits and I need to get more confidence and I just refused point blank to do the other slip because it was just too tight well trust me it was no picnic I know it's no picnic, but I'm not going to get better if I'm refusing to go on the helm. Well, it didn't stop you making me doing it. I just think you're a more competent sailor as far as that's concerned. But I, that's my, it's like more of my, my challenge to be as good as you. <laughs> but I just know he gets the shitty end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you get to go you get to go there first, Beth. 
<laughs> okay, well, we're out at sea again. We've got the seals up. And um, can you stop it while we just got this noise? There's the jets. <laughs> the jets are now running, thank goodness. Am I allowed to talk yet? Yes, you can talk now. Well, we're out at sea again and we're under sail, glad to say. And um, we've got a situation where we've got a sort of wind against tide. The tide is going that way and the wind is more or less coming that way. So the upshot is we've got two choices to go close hauled because we want to go that way. Um, we can either go on starboard tack, which will take us out over there, and it won't really get us any closer to Bangor. Or we can go on port tack, which is what we've done, which is going over that way, which doesn't look like it's taken us closer to Bangor, but the tide is moving us this way. It's a, te a technique called lee buying. Put the tide on your lee buy and go toward your target, and you won't go as fast over ground because you're not taking the tide with you, you're going across it. But the upshot is that you will make progress to your target quicker because our course magnetic is about 180, our course over ground is about 170. We're getting 10 degrees toward Bangor for no effort on our part. So that makes our journey shorter. So although we're going slower, it's a shorter track and we'll get there quicker. Little tip, top tip. I've been experimenting with balancing the sails and um, what that means is I want the force supplied by the foresail and the force supplied by the mainsail to balance the boat so she goes in a straight line. If there's too much force at the front of the boat, up near the bow, the bow will get pushed that way and the boat will turn to starboard. If there's too much force at the back of the boat, which will be the mainsail's job, the stern and the back of the boat will get pushed to starboard and the nose will get pushed to port. So the boat will then steer that way. If we can get the force supplied by both sails to be about the same, then the boat will go in more or less a straight line. And so the autopilot is off, there's nothing holding the wheel, as you can see, the wheel is totally free, and it's not turning. What we've basically done here is we've left the wheel free, we've taken a bead on some land in front of us, and we've adjusted the foresail and the mainsail until the boat has stopped turning port or starboard and maintains a completely straight line, which she is now doing. So I can leave the autopilot off, or I can put the autopilot on just as a safety measure, but the boat is now holding a steady course with no intervention from us. Um, certainly uh, this is what you want even if we do put the autopilot on because she'll need to do less work. The less work the autopilot does, the less power it draws from your batteries, just less wear and tear on everything. It means the boat's not stressed, the crew's not stressed. And who wants to be a stressed crew? It might be exciting, get the adrenaline rushing. But it wears out real quick. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a balanced boat. We're holding a nice steady course of about 132 and we are happy bunnies. As we came into the slip, I dropped the mooring line over the side. Not exactly my finest moment. So Gaynor pushed us up against the pontoon so that I could step off and secure the boat. Well, the scenery behind us has changed a little because this is Banga Marina. <laughs> and, um, in last week's blog, we got rid of all our boat projects and we cleared the back berth. And what have I been doing? I've gone over to Boats and Bobs and I've bought my next boat project. <laughs> oh, dears, you can't stop a good girl and a boat project. You can't keep them apart. Coming 
back out of Bangor, the weather had turned and the wind was directly in our face. Rather than tacking, we left the motor on and ran up a scrap of jenny to run across Belfast Lock to get to the lee of the opposite shore. So why are you looking like a drowned rat now? Because I am a drowned rat, it's chucking it down out there and the wind's gone up to 4.6. We've yeah. got about three reefs in the jenny and we're running under engine. It should be about 40 minutes till we're in. Yeah. And uh, I'll be glad when the 40 minutes is over. I mean, there's nothing wrong that I just don't like getting wet and cold. Yeah, uh, we had a perfect sail over to Bangor, but not so perfect Coming on the, the way back, back. yeah. <laughs> well, if, if it wasn't for this virus thing, meaning we can't stay overnight in Bangor, I just would have stayed in there tonight. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but you're not allowed to. You're not allowed you? to, so we've got to make our way back to Carrick. But this is what life's like, but we're just making the best of what we can. We are indeed, we've got a bit of white white a little, 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 bit of white water coming over the bay, but that's the way it goes. Although we were close hauled, the wind blowing the halyard began to lift the mainsail out of its bag, and so Gaynor tethered up and went forward to secure the mainsail. That was a little scary going forward to tie that down, but do you know what? I feel happier with it in the bag than um, going up the mast. So happy days. Well, that was a bit of to do. Um, I'm so glad Beverly was on the helm coming in the, into the slip. Beverly wasn't. <laughs> well, well um, the wind caught her just as we were coming in and basically we had to moor the boat up to the, the other... Um... We had to raft up to the boat next to us, didn't we? And then cross the decks and then pull Salty Lass across on ropes. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about the dinner. Oh, the dinner. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, dinner is served. Dinner is served. Now, that is what we call proper dinner. <sighs> right, where's my wine glass? Oh, yeah. Right, fill her up. <laughs> First we need some sea, and then we need a bit of land. We are going from the port at the bottom of the diagram to the one at the top. We assume that the tide is going westward at two knots and the wind is blowing southerly. So when we leave port we have two choices. We can go on starboard tack which is shown by the green arrow, or we can go on port tack which is shown by the red arrow. We will say that regardless of course, the boat does five knots for two hours. During that time, the boat is pushed westward by the tide. The red boat is taking the tide against its leeward bow, whereas the green boat is taking the tide against its windward bow. When the boats have to tack, the red boat that started on port tack is closer to the destination port. The green boat is much further away and has a longer second tack. If we look at the distances travelled, the red boat has gone eight and a half miles in two hours and the green boat has gone eleven and a half miles in two hours. The green boat is therefore moving about 33% faster than the red. But the next tack makes the difference. The green boat has another two and a half hours to make port, whereas the red boat only has one hour to make port. The total travel time for the green boat is about four and a half hours, but the red boat managed it in three hours. By lee buying, it stayed close to its destination and its final tack was short and with the tide. So if you have the choice, start by lee buying and keep the tide on your lee buy as often as you can. Keep the other tacks as short as possible.